today. How are y'all today? Good to see y'all. Uh, I'm Pastor Gomez. Uh, I, I have the honor of being the pastor here. Uh, we're good to see you. So I'm going to allow all the fifth and sixth graders to go ahead and leave. To leave to their class. And uh, I want to give a shout out to two persons today. Is that okay? <clears throat> the first one that I want to give a shout out. Jesus, stand up. Listen, listen, before you, y'all need to know why I'm giving the shout out. This young man, <clears throat> in 30 years, <clears throat> no one from Galveston has been accepted to West Point in 30 years. Oh, wow. This is the first Hispanic in the history of Galveston. He's going to West Point. <laughs> awesome. Proud of you, man. Woo! Yes, congratulations. He didn't know I was going to do that. If y'all don't know what West Point is, it's a Harvard of the military. And it's very hard to get in, even if you have the money. Amen. He's got a scholarship to go to West Point. Yeah. Jesus, never forget Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, never forget your mama. Never forget that God has been good to you. The other person I want to uh, 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 give a shout out because he got accepted to the Salvation Army. <laughs> to dude. <laughs> Today, uh, yesterday was his birthday, but we've always celebrated today. So, dude, happy birthday. Yeah. I heard a comedian say, man, all the guys at school were talking about they were army brats and they were here and everything. He goes, man, I was an army brat too. He says, where, where, what kind of, what, where did your father serve? He goes, he was part of the Salvation Army. <laughs> all right. So dude, uh, dude, happy birthday. I love you, man. I love you. Uh, you don't know how much I love my son, my children. I, I love all three of them. Uh, I've got three children. But the truth is I love Rio more now. Wow. All right. Rio's my boy. So, uh, happy birthday, happy birthday. I would sing, but I don't sing like these guys, but happy birthday, and I pray God's best over your life. Amen. Sing anyway. I'll sing at the end of the service, all right? So, uh, hey, uh, if you're here, we start a new series today. It's called A Life of Legacy, yeah. Yeah. all right? Now, I want to I tell you this, that if you do things for yourself, when you die, everything will be forgotten, but you, if you live... To help others, and if you live a legacy, it's going to li live beyond you. So this series, for the next five weeks, is going to talk about living a life of legacy. So today is week one. Say with me, week one. Week one. How many of you are blessed? Yeah. All right. If you don't feel blessed, just the fact that you have life, you're blessed. Today, I get to officiate at a funeral of a young man, 42 years old. And, and some of you are younger, some of you are older. Just the fact that you still have life, you're blessed. Amen. But today I'm going to talk to you that God has always wanted to take you and for you to live a life beyond blessed. That's right. All right? So that's what I'm going to talk about. How many of you have ever been under financial stress? Some of you are there right now. All right? So next week I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you what the Bible says, how to live beyond financial stress. Week three, I'm going to talk about living by the principle of first. And then week four, I'm going to get a little bit more practical. I'm going to, I'm going to just give you some biblical advice, uh, what has worked for me and what's been working for me. So, uh, so the Bible is very practical. So I'm going to tell you how to live practically. And then week five, I'm going to show you how to live a life of legacy. Uh, for those of you that have been here the past couple of weeks, We've been talking that we are going to give in four weeks for building for the future. All right? So how many of you in the past years have given for building for the future? All right? So thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been doing this for 29 years. All right? So this is amazing. This is amazing. I'm going to try not to get emotional. All right? So please help me. Uh, on March the 29th, on March the 29th will be our 29th year that our church has been giving for building for the future. Today, you're going to be able to see a glimpse at the end when I conclude. How is it that we've been able to do everything that we've done? Number one is because of God, and then number two is because we have very generous people. Yes. 
If you, I don't know if you were here a couple of weeks ago. Dude says, I don't think we have one or no more than one or two. I don't think no more than one or two people in our church that makes over $100,000. But we have people in our church that are very generous. And for the past years, they've given. Now, this 29 is very significant because today, my wife and I, besides the fact that dude, dude's birthday was yesterday, but because it's 29th, but we've always celebrated his birthday on March the 1st. When we got here to Galveston, it was March the 1st, 1991. Today, my wife and I celebrate 29 years of being the pastors here at New Life. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you, si me empiezan el, el, el reloj ahí, dile a Ruby que me lo empiece. Let me tell you why this is so significant. Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence. But this week, I got the privilege to go back to my hometown. Some of you don't know, I was born and raised in West Texas. Uh, my wife says, be careful what you say because they're watching you on Facebook. <laughs> and, and, I mean, people, and I, I, I visited my uncles, uh, my cousins, I mean, my boys from the hood. And you know what they told me? We listen to you every Sunday. We listen to you. So for my home people from La Mesa, the Golden Tornadoes, my uncle, my aunts, my cousins, we welcome you to New Life today. Come on, we welcome you to New Life today. We welcome you to New Life today. So, so you know, I was there and they say, man, they, we watch you on Facebook. I said, really? You sure? He said, yeah, I can tell you what you've been. Well, my wife says, be careful what you say because people, you, don't know, you don't know what people are watching. You. So last year I was preaching and, and my wife usually says in Spanish, la hambre, tú eres de un rancho. For those of you who don't speak the heavenly language, yeah. Spanish, <laughs> that means is you're from a little ranch. My, 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 my hometown has about 8,000 people. And my wife said, no, hombre, tú eres el rancho. And, and my preaching, I said, you know, sometimes my wife jokingly says that. The next day, my, one of my cousins calls the church. Hey, I'm looking for the pastor. My wife recognized who it was. And he goes, uh, tell him that I return my call. So about 30 minutes later, I return my uh, I return my cousin's call. And the first thing that came out of his mouth was, Hey, la mesa no es un rancho. <laughs> <laughs> la mesa is not a rancho. He had been listening. He had been listening. So la mesa is not a rancho. <laughs> All right. So so uh, I had to go back home. I told you all last week, my mom has uh, stages of dementia and we were able to take her to a doctor and on Friday on Friday I drove to, uh, I flew to Midland my mom lives in Midland Texas now I mean there's oil like crazy in Midland man and I said what am I doing in Galveston I could be <laughs> working and, and but then I forgot that's a desert this is paradise man this is this is paradise really if you know West Texas compared to Galveston we living in paradise all right there's tumbleweeds all over there's sand all over. All right? So I drove to my hometown. I drove to my hometown. And you will never know, guys. You will never be able to understand my gratitude. Uh, I took a picture of the last home where I was raised, where I lived. And it's falling down. And, and this song that Alma and the guys were singing, you've been so faithful and you've been so good to me. You never will understand my gratitude towards God. And I pray, I say this publicly, I pray that God never allows me to forget where he brought me out of. I mean, I was raised poor. I was raised poor. My God. All my friends are dead or in prison. And when I drove into my hometown... My mom was with me, and I said, God, what did you see? And, and this song says this, his goodness was running after me. His goodness was running after me. If you don't know, my, La Misa is about 600 miles from here. It takes about 12 hours to get there, 12 hours. So I'd rather fly, all right? So, so God, thank you. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, thank you for saving me. God, thank you for... For being so, so faithful and so good to me. Thank you because today you allow me to celebrate also. And I honor you for the privilege of being here in Galveston for these past 29 years. Thank you for new life, God. Thank you for what you've done. 
But God, I'm expecting and I know that you're going to do so much more. So for that, we thank you. Come on, please join me in giving God thanks. Come on. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Man, it was awesome. I got to see some of my cousins, some of my... I call my old drug dealer. Not, I did, I did. I'm, I'm not going to say his name here, but I call his, my old drug dealer. I said, hey, man, I want to hook up with you. I got something good for you. He said, really? He goes, yeah, I got the best. He said, really? What, what do you got? He said, man, once you got this, you don't need marijuana because with God, you got all you want. <laughs> so really, I called, I called two of my... My drug dealer is really the guys that, that my, the guys that took me to all my rock concerts, and, and uh, that's all I'll say. <laughs> I didn't buy nothing. I didn't smoke nothing. Praise God. All right. <laughs> 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 Who would have been old? <laughs> 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 ne- ne- next week, next week, I'll share with you of a guy that we hired that he was high. He was high, and he invited us to smoke a joint. He goes, you want to sm- smoke a joint? I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. There's a guy that we hired to, uh, uh, to clean our parking lot. And he says, Pastor, you're a good guy, man. He was sitting right there where AJ is at. And he, to- <laughs> and he, said, and he told me this. And he, <laughs> and he said, uh, you know what? I don't do anything wrong. But, you know, the only thing is I smoke pot. So I could smell it on him, right? And uh, he says, you know what? I, I want to clean your, 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 your garage. I mean, your, your parking area. He goes, I don't. I only have a car garage, and he goes, I'll, I'll clean it. So he went to clean it, and when he got there, he goes, you want to smoke a joint with me? <laughs> and I go, no, of course not. I don't want to smoke one. I want to smoke two. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy goes, oh, man, pastor, I can't believe it. I said, I'm, I'm joking, man. I, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but he told me, you want to smoke a joint? I said, no, I want to smoke two, man. And he goes, nah, I don't smoke no more. But, but God delivered me from a life of drugs, addiction, and thank God. All right, so, so when I got here 29 years ago, when I got here 29 years ago, this was the church. This was the church. 29 years ago, that's what the church. God brought me to this place. If you know anything about square feet, it was 400 square feet. It was 20 by 20. I felt blessed to be a pastor there. But my topic this morning is living beyond, Amen. living beyond. Amen. And I know, I want you to see that God has blessed us beyond what we ever thought it could be. This is what God has done. You know, if you don't clap, that's all right, but I'm going to do it myself because God has been so, so good. He's blessed us beyond. He's blessed us beyond. Everything we've done, it is not about building, it's about people. All right, building is just a, 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 an avenue or something that we use, but God has blessed us, all right? Uh, years ago, we started with, one, with four live groups. We started with four live groups, and we had one coach. We used to call them supervisors. Now we call them coaches. Uh, today, today we have nine coaches and 31 live groups, all right? How many of you went to your live group this week? Man, I went to an all-mess live group. It was awesome. Where's Beto? The tuna was awesome, man. <laughs> Luis, Beto, Fernando, all y'all guys, y'all were there. Yeah. Thurman. Yeah. I can't mention all of y'all. <laughs> so, so this is the thing. We have 31 live groups, but at least five or seven already are too big. Yes. Come on, praise God. We have several that are already 15, 16, 17, 18. It's too big because I can't eat with all of y'all there. <laughs> no, nah, it's not about the food. So I'm praying that next season we'll already have 40 life groups. Amen. So we were blessed with four. We're beyond blessed by having 31 life groups. We were blessed with, I was, a, I was the first original coach, all right? And I were, and, and today, thank God for all the coaches that we have. So, and we're going to continue to rest because God wants us to live beyond Amen. blessed. I married my wife when I was 21, going on 22. This is my, if you don't know this, I call her my BMW. My beautiful Mexican wife. She's my BMW. And this, the truth is this, guys. She's been a blessing to me like you can never understand it. You know? And God gave us three beautiful children. Uh, they've grown up. And, but we are beyond blessed. 
I don't know if you know it, but, but this is the improved version of the Gomez family. Real Santiago. If you would have, this, this is the improved ver, Gomez version a thousand times. You hear that? Look at his hair. Look at mine. The color, guys. The color. All right? Not, not, not the amount. Look at, if you, this is the best picture that I love about Rio. Look at his beautiful blue eyes. All right? Doesn't he look like his granddad? My sister said, yeah, he does, but the other granddad, <laughs> all right? The fact he might look like his other granddad, but he is real Santiago Gomez, Amen. all right? So I don't know about you, but my wife and I feel beyond blessed. Dude was a blessing, but he is 100% a better version than dude. He's a thousand more than me. He's a thousand more than me, all right? But he's a 100% improved version of dude. All right? So I don't know about you, man, but I feel be I get to see Rio every day. I get to play with Rio every day. He prays for me. I pray for him. And now he gives us, what do you call him? Bump. He gives me fizz bumps today. All right? So God wants you to live. If you don't know this, God wants you to live beyond blessed. Now, why does God desire for us to live beyond blessed. Let me show you why. If you've ever read the story of David, if you've ever read the story of King David, King David was a shepherd boy. What was David? Shepherd boy. All right. Some of you know this story. Some of you don't. When God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint the next king of Israel, Jesse had seven boys. And they were big and tall. And when Samuel saw the boys come in, he said, surely the first one, this is the one God has chosen. And God says, no, that's not it. And everyone passed. Finally, after seven, and God didn't indicate to Samuel that he had chosen any of those first seven. Finally, the prophet Samuel tells Jesse, do you have any more children? And then Jesse says, oh, yes, I forgot. I have one more, the eighth one. But he's taking care of sheep. He's, he's the youngest of them. And he says, call him because we can't eat. We can't, I can't go further until I see that last boy. And as soon as David came in, came in, God says, this is the one. This is the one that I've chosen to be the next king of Israel. Now, I don't know about you. But Dev, there is no university to teach a shepherd boy, how to become a king. And David became the conquering king of Israel. He conquered more land. He killed Goliath. God gave him more than what he thought. God blessed him beyond his wildest dreams. But David messed it up. One day he didn't go to battle, and he was out in the terrace, and he saw a woman naked taking a bath. She called her, had fornicated with her, committed adultery, a couple of days later, she tells David that she's pregnant. David finds out that she's pregnant. And her husband, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, was in the battle. He calls him, long story short. Not only did he commit adultery, but he killed her, her husband. And when you read the story, uh, uh, listen to this, listen to this carefully. When you read the story, the prophet Nathan comes to David, and this is what he tells him. God bless you so much. But even more, God wanted to bless you more than what you has blessed you so. You know what God was saying? I had so much for you, but you messed it up. Thankfully, God is a forgiving God, and God did it with his next son. But the truth is this, guys. All the way from Adam to you, God has been wanting to bless you even more than you and I deserve because God is a faithful God, God is a good God, and God is a Father that knows how to bless. So, so now when I'm talking about living beyond bless, it's not, I'm not talking that God is going to give you all this money. So the truth is when God blesses you so you can be a blessing to others. So last week I told you three truths. I'm not going to talk too much on this because I talked about it last week. Number one in your outline is 
Living beyond bless is about three biblical truths, and I talked about them last week. You have them in your outline? God told Abraham, I will bless you. Genesis chapter 2, 12, verse 2. I will bless you. Say with me, I will bless you. And you will be a blessing to what? All right. So last week I told you three truths. I'm not going to teach on them too much. Number one, God blesses me. So what? It's in your outline. God blesses me. We are blessed to be a blessing. When we bless others, God takes care of our needs. And number three, the more we're blessed by God, the more he expects us to be generous and be good stewards. Read it again. The more we're blessed by God, the more he expects us to be generous and be good stewards. How many of you have God has blessed you? How many of you want more? Well, in order for you to be blessed more, God wants you to be generous and God wants you to be a good steward. Notice what Luke 12, 48 says. Luke 12, 48 says this. Much is required from those whom much is given, for the responsibility is greater. So living beyond blessed is that God blesses me so I can be a blessing. When we bless others, God takes care of our needs. And the more we're blessed by God, the more he expects us to be generous and to be good stewards. So today, I want to conclude by telling, teaching you this. Living beyond bless walks on two legs. All right? Now, what I want you to do is this. Do this. I don't want you to look at the legs of the person sitting next to you. I want you to look at your own legs. And make sure you have two. Do you have, how many of you have two legs? Raise your hand. All right. Who said thank God? Exactly. Thank God. How many of you know people that only have one leg? All right. They don't get where they need to get as fast as they need to. How many, how many of you know someone that does not have both legs? Either they were amputated or they were born without legs. All right. Now, again, I want you to look at your legs. Because you're blessed by having two legs. Now, listen to what I'm going to teach, teach you. In every area of your financial life, some of you are walking with one leg. Now, try it when you leave. Try it when you leave. Try to walk a block like this. After a while, say, forget the pastor. <laughs> All right? If you can, get a walker. If you can, I, I saw a lady back there has a walker. God bless her heart. But if you can, get a walker and try to walk. Just with the walker. See how hard it is. The truth is this, guys. That you can continue to walk and handle finances your way. But it's like walking with one leg or no legs at all. But the truth is that God has given you two legs. Two legs. Living beyond bless walks on not one, but two. All right? So I want to lay the foundation. I want to lay the foundation. Next weeks, the next four weeks, I'm going to talk a little bit more of those two legs. These are the two legs. It's in your outline. Number one, the first leg is called generosity. The first leg is called generosity. Generosity or the enemy of generosity is selfishness. And I'll talk about more about that. Now, a generous heart, a generous heart steams. From a grateful heart. You will never become generous. If you're not grateful. Those of you that are generous. Is because that you're grateful. Now listen to me. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about. I will never be generous with my wife. If I am not grateful. To the blessing that she's been in my life. When I take my wife for granted. I stop being grateful and I stop being generous with her. I stop being kind. I start express I stop expressing that I love her. I stop expressing that she's awesome. I stop expressing that I would marry her again when I stop take when I when I start take uh, when I stop being grateful to her. It's the same thing with God. When I stop being grateful with God, 
I began to close my hands. And when I close my hands to be generous, I also close my hands to receive. Is when I open my hands and becomes generous, is that I also open my hands to receive. So the first leg, say with me, is generosity. generosity. Come on, say generosity. generosity. Now, I want, you to, I want to teach you this. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. And David was the one that said this. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14, 14. Come on, read it with me. But who am I? And who are my people that we could give anything to you? Come on, read it again. Who am I and who are my people that we could give anything for them? Read it. Now, notice that it's the exclamation part, exclamation point. Everything. Come on, shout it out. Everything we have. Come on, read it again because some of you don't believe this. Everything. I have, now take a while, the, the, uh, the, the, the we, and say I. Everything I have has come from you. Are you convinced that everything that you have has come from God? Yeah. See, if you're not convinced, you're going to continue to walk with one leg or no legs at all. Everything we have comes from you. Come on, read it. And I give only what you first gave to me. All right? You already heard that it's Deuce's birthday, right? So I want to... I want to give him a birthday gift. So I, I, want, to, I want to give him 100 bucks. All right? Now, no, you know, I know some of you only have 10. I'm going to say, is there, is there anyone here that would, would, could either give me or let me borrow 100 bucks so I can bless dude with 100 bucks? Is there anyone? Honestly, anyone? You, y- y'all got it? Lupito Bicho, man. Y'all should have gotten up. Dude, you, you saw their hands. You can go. You get, you. All right? Now, this is the truth, guys. $100 is a lot. Amen. Lupito, did it hurt you to give me these $100? Nope. Why not? Does the nail know that you were going to give me 100 bucks? <laughs> nope. nope. You know why it didn't hurt Lupito? Because before the service, I gave him the 100 bucks. <laughs> it wasn't his. Amen. I said, Lupito, you know, I'm going to preach and, and I'm going to give, but make sure, he, and I said, make sure you give him back. <laughs> All right? You know why he didn't hurt the people? Because I gave it to him. When you understand that God, God has given to you everything, yes. you'll become generous. On, and when you give me the verse, give me the verse. And David says, give me the verse, please. We only give to you what you first give to us. On, God will never ask from you something that first he does not give to you. Good, All right. So I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Generosity is the first leg. God does not bless us. God does not bless us to raise our level of living. God blesses us to raise our level of giving. God, listen guys, God has, one day, I dare you to say, Pastor, I'll drive with you to your hometown. I'll take you to my hometown. And you're going to understand why I love God so much because truly, guys, God has been faithful and good to me. Everything that I have, everything that I am, I owe it all to God. God. Everything that I have, everything that I ever give to God is before he gave to me. But God does not give to me to raise my level of living. He gives me so I can raise my standard of giving. All right? Now, Winston Churchill said this. Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of England, said this. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Let let me show you what he's trying to say here. I make a living by working. I make a living by what I get, but I make a life by what I give. I decide what kind of life I want to live when I become generous. I make a living with what I get, but I make a life with what I give. And the first leg, the first leg, say with me, is generosity. Generosity. The second leg, the second leg is stewardship. Say with me, stewardship. stewardship. All right, so... Stewardship is, is basically a manager. A steward is someone who manages the resources of another. That's what a steward is. All right? So another word for, another word for steward 
or stewarding is managing, all right? Now, I want you to read this in your outline. I, I purposely left it in your outline. Read it. Another word for stewarding is managing. It's in your outline. Come on, read it. Another word for stewarding is managing. If you hired someone to manage your stuff, and if they didn't manage it well, would you want to promote them or trust them with more? Come on, read it again. If you hired someone to manage your stuff, and if they didn't manage it well, would you want to promote them or trust them with more? Would you? All right. So let's make an example here. I don't know how much you own. I don't know what you have. But I know at least all of you have a car. All right. Key Young again says thank you. So if you say, Pastor, I'm going to hire you. And I want you to manage not only my car, my home, my dog. I, I don't manage cats and dogs, all right? I don't manage that. Pastor, I want you to take care of my home. I, I'm going to go for about a year. I'm going to go and this is my house, this is my condo, whatever it is. I've got friends, pastor friends that come to Galveston and I take them, I, I take them to drive and they see these beach houses and the, I, they see these beautiful condominiums and I, and I always make a deal with them. I say, man, you buy it and I'll take care of it for, for you here in Galveston. Amen. I will manage that for you. All right, so imagine for a moment that, that you loan me your car. You loan me your car, whatever you're driving, and, and I arrive at Lupito's house. I say, Lupito, how do you love my car, man? Lupito goes, Lupito's going to think, Pastor's crazy, man, because I know that's not his car. He's got a bike, and it's not a Harley. All right, and then I invite Justo and Lupito and Keon, man, y'all come to my house, man. We're going to watch the Super Bowl, man. We're going to watch the Rockets and Spurs. Come on, come on. I've got food. The refri i got food in the refrigerator, and you know, man, that that is not my house. And that food in the refrigerator is not mine. And, 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 and suddenly, the owner of the house arrives. And suddenly, they, I tell him, hey, guys, I'm sorry, but we got to go. <laughs> the party's over. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to walk because that car was not mine. <laughs> All right? Okay, listen to this. <coughs> if you were the owner and you hired me to manage your car, your home, and everything, would you give me a raise? Would you promote me if I didn't manage your stuff well? No. Yes or no? no. How, really, I, I, I want to see how many really of y'all are Christians uh, that, are, that are forgiving. <laughs> All right? How many of you, if, if I wasn't a good manager of your stuff, would promote me and, and, and give me a raise? Come on, come on, come on. Be, be merciful. Come on. Anybody? Anybody? Man, y'all are, y'all, the Lord, these people need <laughs> forgiveness. They came for, All right, now let me ask you a question. If you don't do it, why should God do it? Why should God trust you with more? Because everything you have is God's. And everything you have, God has given it to you. Oh, I don't hear y'all. David said, everything that I have got is yours. And I give only to you because you gave me. See, if you're going to live beyond bless, not only do you have to walk with generosity... You've got to walk and become a better steward, a better manager of what God has placed in your hands. Amen. Why should God trust me with more if I haven't been faithful with the little that he has given me? I splashed it all on myself. Man, I went to Cancun, to Concan. You don't know this, though. I went all over the world, but I never gave to God kingdom. I never blessed anyone. As a matter of fact, I'm so selfish, I haven't been able to bless my kids, and I don't have anything to bless my grandchild. Why should God? And that's the problem with many of you. Now, God is a good God. I said God is a good God. That even though we're a bad manager, God gives us more opportunities to learn. And that's my interest to you as your pastor I want you to become more generous because God blesses the generous. And I want you to learn to become a better steward because if you become a better steward, God will trust you with more. Thank you. Let me put my hundred bucks before I forget, man. Lupito might come after the service. I'll manage it for you. Dude saying, I know that you asked it for me. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. 
Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Let me finish with these two verses. Come on, read it with me. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Okay, look at me. This is Jesus speaking. If he can trust you with little, he can trust you, trust you with much. But whoever cannot be trusted and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Okay, look at me, guys. The bottom line, if you learn to be a good steward of the little things, all things God has given you, he can trust you with more. But if you cannot be faithful and a good steward with little, let me say it this way. I don't know how much you make, but I will tell you that money is not your issue. Money is not your problem. Let me say it again. Now, you can say, Pastor, that's easy for you to say. No, I'm just like you. Money is not my problem. Your problem and my problem is how we manage money. Because tomorrow, you could get a twenty, thirty thousand dollars raise. How many of you would like that? Amen. Some of you, I don't, I don't know, Pastor. All right, let me talk to my family members that are seeing me in La Mesa because suddenly everybody got quiet. See, guys, tomorrow you could get a twenty, thirty thousand dollars raise or a million dollars raise, and you would still have pro money problems. Because if you are unfaithful with little, and you don't know how to manage little you are going to have the same problem, but in a bigger scheme of managing money. Jesus said, come on, give me that verse. Anyone, anyone, give me the verse, please. Whoever, rather it's me, you, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. So my question is, can God trust you with little? Can God trust you with little? Because if he can trust you with little, he's going to be able to trust you with lot much. But if he can't trust you with little, why should God trust you with more? On, and in the following verse, the following verse, the following verse, Jesus is talking about a parable where he gave five talents, a, a master gave five talents, three talents, and one. And I want you to see this. The master replied, well done. Say with me, well done. Well done. Now notice what he says. Well done. Good. Okay, look at me, guys. God never called you and me to be successful. When I get to heaven, listen to me, when I get to heaven, God is not going to say, were you successful as a dad? No, let, let me repeat that. When I get to heaven, God is not going to say, David, were you successful as a husband? He's going to say, were you faithful as a husband? Because faithfulness will always trump over success. All right? When I get to heaven, God is not going to tell me, were you successful as a father? He's going to tell me, were you faithful as a father? When I get to heaven, God is not going to tell me, were you successful as the pastor of new life? He's not going to ask me that. He's going to say, were you faithful to what I called you to do in Galveston? I didn't call you to do what Abundant Life is doing. I didn't call you to do what Church of the Living God is doing, what the Methodist Church is doing. I called you to be faithful to what I called you to do at New Life. Amen. Were you faithful to that? Yes. Amen. That's Notice what he says. Well done, good. Come on, it's up there. Yeah. Well done, good and faithful servant. Notice what it says. You've been faithful Amen. with what? Amen. The following verse, please. I will put you in charge. Can, do you want to be in charge of many things? So what, what does it take for an arts to be in charge of many things? To be faithful. To be faithful with the little I have. To be generous even if I have a dollar. To be generous even if I only have five dollars. It's not the amount that God sees. It's the heart that God sees how I give it. Can I be generous with five dollars? Listen. If you can't be generous with $5, you sure won't be generous with $5,000 with $5 million. Some of you say, God, if you give me a million dollars, I'll give it to you. No, you're lying. Because if you can't give with what little you have now, you won't. 
When you get more, you go, oh, man, I got to give this. Oh, no, Lord, I know. Oh, heck no. No, no, heck no. No, remember, everything God, God's given to us and everything belongs to him. Can you be faithful with the little that you've given? Now, let me tell you this. Money is never the problem. Money is never the problem. People are worth more than all the money you and I make together. Do you know why God has blessed New Life? Because we were faithful with the little. We were faithful with the little. I've been faith. Listen, in order for God to bless New Life, I had to get my finances in order. So how can I tell you to get your finances in order if my finances are not in order? Now, I'm not a millionaire, but I'm a blessed and I'm beyond blessed, even if I only have less than $1,000 in my bank account because I'm still married to the same woman after 33 years. My children are serving the Lord. Rio is going to serve the Lord. Rio is going to rock the world. Rio is going to rock the world. And God has been good. So my question is, what, are you walking with two legs or with one or none? What are the two legs? What are the two legs? Stewardship. And stewardship. stewardship. See, your money is never your problem. It's how you're using it, how you're spending it, how you're splashing it. And generous and being a good steward. So I pray. I pray that you become more generous, and I pray that you become a better steward. Father, you know that I am grateful. You've entrusted me, and you've blessed me with much. And as you've been telling me, you want to bless us with even more. But God, help me to be a better steward of the little that you've given to us. And I pray that you help everyone here, God, to be better stewards and for them to become more generous. Those that are generous, help us to become better stewards. Those of us that are not generous, help us, God, to little by little become faithful to you that you can trust us with much. I pray this in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Tell the person next to you, come on, walk with your legs. Walk with both of 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 your legs. Of your legs. All right, guys, let me, let me finish. This is my time. This is my time that, we, that I tell you that we get to give. Say with me, we get to give. Get to give. You don't have to give. We get to give. I told you a while ago that for 29 years we've given for building for the future. And this is what we have done. Say with me, we get to give. We get to give. So if you're here, don't worry, we're not giving anything. In four weeks, on March the 29th, on March the 29th, is we will give our offering that we give every year for giving, for building for the future. Yeah. All right? So this is what we do. Every year, whatever amount we give, whatever amount we give, the first 10% we always give it to missions. Amen. We don't only help missionaries around the world. There is at least several, there's three or four churches here on the island that we've given money to for them to rebuild. Bible Baptist Church around, uh, down the road, they're, they're my neighbors where I live. After the hurricane, they didn't have money to redo their flooring. I think we gave them either three or $5,000 and we gave them the money to redo their, their, their floor. There was a church behind uh, San Luis that got, that someone uh, caught, uh, started a fire there. I think it's a Presbyterian church. The pastor there was my friend. A year we gave them either two or $3,000 so they could help them to rebuild. We give to the Salvation Army. We give to different, we don't only spend the money here. We give it away also. In the month of July, I will say this. Some of you don't even know how many missionaries we have. In the month of July, the whole month of July, we're bringing in the missionaries. We're, the first one is coming from Brazil. Uh, the other one is uh, from Com Comboy of Hope. The other one, they're going to the Netherlands. We're supporting a missionary that is at Perry View University where uh, uh, AJ went to the university, tech, uh, University of uh, San Antonio. We're supporting a Japanese that got saved here in the U.S. And he's starting a campus ministry at University of Texas at Arlington. So we're, we're going to bring them all in in July, and you're going to be able to see what we are doing by not only by our praying, but by our giving through our, as we help missionaries. 
The other thing that we do with this offering, we always give for the children and youth of our church. We're giving for the future of our church. All right? I will tell you this. None of the money that we raise goes to my salary or any of the persons. That, as a matter of fact, everyone that works here, we give for the building for the future. All right? So this is what we've done. Say with me, we get to give. Come on, say we get to give. The first year that we gave, 29 years ago, 29 years ago, we, it was little. We gave 6500 the first year. Last year, in cash, we gave over 77000 on one Sunday in cash. All right? So this is where we started. Back in that church, God told me, I'm going to bless you. I want to do so much more. Tell, tell the people to give for the future. I said, God, how are we going to give? We don't have no money. I didn't have money. Say, believe me. So we started giving 29 years ago. And three years later, because of what they gave, we built that church. We built it. In the year 2000, we started this building. We completed it. And then in 2017, you don't know this, but we had to buy five properties. One, two, three, four, five. And two years ago, this is where we completed. All right? God has been good. God is good. He's been faithful and he's been good. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is what we've given from 1994 to 1990, 1991. To we were 50, less than 50 people. 1991 to 1994, the people gave in three years 150,000. Then from 1995 to the year 2000, we gave to start this building. We already had 480,000 save up because we had given in five years for building for the future. The past 10 years, listen, the past 10 years in cash from 2008 to 2018, we gave. The Moody's didn't give it to us. Fertina didn't give it to us. Listen, listen. The people of our church gave $1.2 million. Isn't God good? So in 10 years, we were able to give and save, and that building cost us $2.7 million. We, we paid $1.2. We only had to borrow $1.5 million because God has been good to us. So this is my challenge. This is my challenge. I believe there's at least 20 people in this service that can give $1,000. That's right. Now, again, we get to give. Some of you are like, oh, do I got to give 1000 No, you don't have to give anything. We get to give. There's 30 people that can give at least 500 There's at least 30 of you that can give 250 There's at least 25 of you that can give 100 You can give 5 You can give 10 the truth is this, guys. When all of us do a little together, we do a lot. When all of us do a little together. So am I, ask, am I asking you to give $1,000? That's between you and God. Am I asking you to give $500? That's between you and God. But if all of us do a little, we will do a lot. All right? So this is what we're going to do. We get to give. I don't want you to feel obligated in four weeks. You pray about it. Even if you don't give, that's cool. The church is going to continue to give. We've done it for 29 years. All right? It's not like, oh, if you're here for the first time, we don't want you to give. Don't, 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 don't freak out. Oh, my God. No, no. Chill. Take, take four shield pills. All right? But the rest of y'all that call New Life your church, this is a way for all of us to give a little and we can do a lot. All right? So if you want to give, just raise your hand. I'm not asking you to raise your hand for 1500 Just come on, ushers. Come on quickly. Come on quickly. Help me. Raise your hands. Come on. Help me. And the guys are going to give you one of these cards. Just give them. Pass them around. Come on. Raise your hand if you want to give this year for building for the future. Raise your hand. Just give them around. Just give them, to the, give them around. Two or three. Give them two or three. Raise your hand. Keep your hand raised and we'll give you. And you'll give for building for the future. I want you to notice this. Once everybody has it, keep your hand raised. Keep your hand raised. If you someone didn't, hey, if you saw someone didn't raise your hand, raise your hand for no, not really. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. All right. Now, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. I just want you to pray. I just want you to pray. And believe God that God will give you the money. That's it. 
If God gives you $1,000, will you give it? Some of you have it already. Some of you don't have it. Just believe God. So it says, this, I'm believing God to provide and give me the following amount to give for building for the future. All right? So you take this home. You don't turn it in the offering plate. You don't take it. In four weeks, you bring your offering. You can give it online. You give it in the offering basket. But I pray that God blesses you, that you become more generous, and that you be a good steward, and that God bless you in your finances. God bless you in your marriage. God bless the future of your children. God, we give for the future of our children and for the future of our church. In Jesus' name, come on. Give God a big round of applause. Thank you for being here. We see you next week.